thank you for watching this week. You know, this whole month, I'm talking about your money. Everything is about your money this month because I want you to get a vision for your financial future. I've titled this, When Payday Comes, Are You Gonna Finance Your Dreams or Live Beyond Your Means? Now, before I get started teaching on this, I wanna say a big thank you to all of you who are writing in, sending your comments and your feedback and writing me on Facebook and different things. I love hearing from you. I pray over those prayer requests and I want you to know that I appreciate you so much. So, thank you. Now, back to our teaching. I'm talking about your money. And you know, if you know anything about me, I only teach from experience. I had no vision for my money years ago. No vision whatsoever. And Proverbs tells us, where there is no vision, the people perish, right? Well, that's true in every area of life. If you don't have a vision for your weight, it'll perish. If you don't have a vision for your money, it'll perish. It's true in every area of life. You have to have a vision. So I wanna talk about in the area of your money. You know, I closed off last week by sharing something from Napoleon Hill, and I want you to hear this again. Napoleon Hill said, I can teach anybody how to get what they truly want in life. The problem is, I just can't find anybody who can tell me what they truly want. In other words, it's just giving some thought to your finances. Instead of, you know, getting your paycheck and just spending it and, yeah, you pay your bills, but you just spend everything and there's no vision of where you want your money to go. Well, if you make you know, $40,000 a year and you spend $40,000 a year, then what are you gonna have at the end of the year? Nothing. What are you gonna have five years from now? Nothing. And you know, that's exactly what Satan hopes. Your enemy, Satan, he hopes that you spend everything you make. Why? So you can never finance the gospel. You can never be a blessing to anybody else. You see a need and you're just like, man, I wish I could do something about it, but I've gotta pay my own bills. That's what Satan wants. He wants us all living paycheck to paycheck, and apparently 70% of Americans do live paycheck to paycheck. Well, I don't believe things will change until we get a vision for them to change. You know, years ago, my husband and I were bleeding for a house, and we were living in a house, but then we wanted to build a house. I was pregnant with Cassidy, and we wanted a bigger place to live, you know. So we got a vision. Well, when we went to look at this house, we found out that it was kind of out of our range financially, but I wanted it so bad. And I kept thinking, I want my little girl to grow up there, you know, and I really want that house. Well, it started with the vision, right? Well, in order to get the house payments where we could afford it, we had to put down 58000 no, 48000 $48,000 put down on the house just to get the payments down to what we could afford. Well, we sat there with the builder and he said, okay, you're saying you can, you can afford this amount every month, then that means you need to put down 48,000. Can you really do that? And me and Rodney just looked at each other and we looked at the builder and we said, we can do it. <laughs> well, I don't know what we were thinking other than our faith was just like sky high that <laughs> nothing's impossible with God. Well, first thing we did was we got a vision. Now this is just a pretend house, but I'm just illustrating how you get a vision. We got a picture of the house we were bleeding for and we put the amount real big at the top, $48,000. Well then I started writing down in little columns, 48, 47, 46, 45, just all the way down to 1,000. And then Rodney and I, okay, think about this. We had been married for five years at this time. In all those five years of being married, we had saved $1,000. That's it, 1,000 in five years. How are we gonna come up with 48,000 in five months? That's when the house would be done, five months. Well, Rodney and I looked at our savings account, we saw the big 1,000 in there, and we said, you know, my dad has taught us that you may not have what you need, <laughs> but you are never without the seed that will produce it. So we took that $1,000 out and we sowed it. We gave the whole thousand away. We sowed it into someone else and just believe God that God honors his word. Every seed produces after its own kind. And we said, Lord, we sow this seed. Then we began praying and asking God for opportunities to make money. We weren't just saying, Lord, just bless us. Just rain money out of heaven. We said, Lord, give us opportunities to make money. 
I'm telling you, we went to work. My husband went outside, you know, and um, he started walking up and down the street with a little paint can and a paintbrush, knocking on people's doors and saying, can I paint the address numbers on your curb <laughs> for five bucks? And he had his little stencil and they'd give him five bucks. You know, sometimes he'd come home with $25, sometimes he'd come home with a couple hundred, but every little bit added up. I began teaching French to kids, you know, and I, we did all kinds of things. Well, point is, oh, and we sold our house we were living in and made $22,000, which was a ton of money, and that, you know, helped us just mark out a bunch of thousands. But we were able to come up with $38,600, $38,600 by the date that we needed this money. Now, we needed 48. We go to the bank, and as we're sitting there with the lady, she says, I don't know what happened, but apparently they knocked off $10,000 that you need to get in. You only need $38,000. We had more than enough to get in our house. We had $38,600. We were just screaming and shouting. You know, we were so excited. But here's the main point of this story. Okay, there's lots of points in this. First of all, pray for opportunities. Don't just wait around for something to happen. Use the work of your hands. But here's the deal. After we moved in that house, years went by. We lived there for nine years. Years went by and we did not save one dollar. However, we were able to save 38,600 in five months. But then years went by and we saved nothing. Why? No vision. Where there is no vision, the people perish. So my challenge this month is I want you to get a vision of where you want to be financially. And when you get that vision, write it down. Write the vision, Habakkuk tells us. Write the vision, make it plain on paper. That's pretty plain, isn't it? 48,000, there's a picture of what we're bleeding for. You can do the same thing. Now the goal I wanna give you, which I recommend, is that you get to a place where out of your monthly income, you tithe 10%, you save 10%, and then you live on 80%. Give God what belongs to Him. You know, Malachi tells us that 10% belongs to God. But then pay yourself 10%. You need to be paid for your work, and right? Put it in a savings account. Put it in investments. Do something with 10% and get to a place of 80%. Now, yeah, that's a big goal maybe for some of us. But here's what I want you to do. Just do the homework. Do the homework this week. Write down what is 10% of your income. What is that number? Well, once you figure that out, write a vision. Say, I'm believing in Jesus' name, I will be able to save 10%, whatever that amount is, and put it in my savings. And then 80%, do the math. What is 80% of your income? That's what you have to spend every month, 80%. My scripture for this month is Proverbs 21:20. 20, the wise have wealth and luxury, but fools spend whatever they get. Don't be a fool. I want you to take advantage of this opportunity, download this free MP3 on payday, and I believe it's going to change your life. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.